the neighbor's mowing his lawn. That's just irresponsible. Stay inside, stay safe. That's why I'm not doing it. Hey, it's Daniel again. This is episode two for the vlog, uh, and you know, there are big changes coming up. Um, namely, I'm getting new glasses from Zenny in the mail today. Uh, other than that, everything's pretty much about the same. We are well into the fourth month of the year, uh, which means it's about high time I gave a top 10 list for my favorite games from last year. Before I jump right into that, I wanted to sort of preface my list a little bit because my list generally doesn't have a lot of the, the big name games from a previous year, um, which some people might find odd from somebody that runs a review channel for board games. Uh, so just a little insight into this. Um, a lot of the games that end up on my top 10 list for the year are ones that I received from publishers to review. Uh, and that isn't due to me feeling any sort of obligation to them or anything. It's just those are the games that I played. Uh, you know, I, I don't get paid for this, so I, I don't have a ton of money to go buy every single new game. So if a publisher sends me a game to review and I have an obligation to play it, I mean, that eats up a lot of my gaming time and that's why they end up on the list. So uh, something I haven't done in previous years is say which games I bought for myself or received as a gift and which ones I received from publishers. So we'll kind of do that uh, this year. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of games that were ranked very highly on other people's lists that probably would have been higher on my list or been on my list at all if I'd either played it more than once or had a chance to uh, play it at all. Number 10 on my list is Slide Quest. From Blue Orange Games. It is one that I am in the process of reviewing. Um, I mentioned last week that it that the review is coming uh, and that's true. Uh, so there's sort of a clue that I enjoyed it. Uh, Slide Quest is a game where you have a little knight on a board and it's kind of like one of those um, labyrinth wooden marble maze games where you move different things only this has different quests. There's 20 different levels. You got a little knight that you have to move around the board and there's four different tabs on the box that you push down on. Uh, so up to four people can play and it, it requires a lot of communication. It's difficult, it's fun, it's funny, and it's quick. Number nine is the standalone expansion to Villainous, which is Villainous, Evil Comes Prepared. Uh, it's, I don't think it's a huge secret. I'm a, I'm a pretty big Disney fan. Um, and I, I kind of always have been. So this idea that there was a game coming out where you could play as a Disney villain uh, was really appealing to me. Um, and especially the way that the, the system is sort of this closed, not deck building because it's not a construction, deck construction game, but a, uh, oh boy, what would the, what would the word be? It's like a pre-constructed deck game. Each villain has their own objectives, their own mechanisms, and their own decks that they kind of cycle through. And the different flavor in all the different expansions and the, the game itself is something that I, I really, really enjoy. Uh, full disclosure for this expansion specifically, I've only played the solo variant that uh, someone posted rules to on BGG. It's really good um, and it gives you a really fun way to sort of experience the players. And it was a fun enough experience for me um, that I added it to my top 10. And I mean, I, I know the system well enough and I, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, the original game made my list last year, so that's why it's number nine. This is, this is one that I purchased for myself as well. Uh, number eight is one that I got to for review. Actually, I reviewed the um, expansion for it, so but I didn't have the base game, so they were kind enough to throw that along. Um, but Arcane Alley. Uh, Arcane Alley is a game where you are trying... You've got, Each player has a grid of cards with magical items in it. You run a shop. You're trying to make um, lines of three in a row, one way or the other. A um, bunch of different rules surrounding what gets you negative points, what gets you... Uh, positive points, how you can mess with other people. Um, but it's a really, uh, it's a game that I love the theme of. I love the idea of running, I love anything where you're running a shop. Uh, and r running a magical shop just is um, butter on the toast. That's not a saying. Um, it's something I really enjoy. And Arcane Alley uh, did a great job with it. Expansion's coming out later and actually I really enjoyed that too. My number seven game for the year of 2019 is Wavelength. It is a party game. Uh, this is one that I backed on Kickstarter, so I did pay for it. Um, if you've been following really any of the reviewers, a lot of them really enjoy this type of thing. It's a party game where uh, each team has a clue giver per round and they have to give a clue based on a spectrum. So the spectrum could have hot on one side and cold on the other. And then the person that's giving the clue has a target that they're trying to get their team to guess on. And they could say, uh, 
you know, say the target is kind of in the middle, but off to the right, more towards the cold, they would give a clue to try to get their team to pinpoint where it's at. I'm really explaining it very poorly, um, but it's a fun game and it's one that I uh, backed on Kickstarter. Uh, number six was a game that I did review and um, didn't expect it to be this high on my list, let alone on the list at all, but trophies. Trophies, it's a little party game where you can play with an entire room of people and it, it is one that I've reviewed as well. Um, so feel free to take that, take a look at that. But the idea is there's, the deck of cards has giant letters on it. So you, the person that's running the game holds up the deck of cards, everyone can see the letter, and then there's categories on the back. The person running the game gives the category and the first person to give an appropriate answer for that category that starts with the letter that's on the card gets that point, gets that trophy, and whoever has the most at the end wins. It's a very simple game uh, that has been a massive hit every single time we've gotten it out. Now, I've almost said out to the table, but it, it's a game that I very rarely play at the table because you can play it just as easily in a living room setting where everyone's sitting down. Don't get a lot of plays this uh, these days. Uh, number five was one that I won from a Twitter contest that Danny Plays Games put on, and it is Cartographers, um, I, which I'm really excited about because I he only heard great things about this, but uh, didn't have a chance to play it and, and wasn't in a position at the time to really spend money on it. So I was super excited to get a copy of this. I uh, have been enjoying it solo. Everyone that I've played it with has enjoyed it as well. It's a game where you are flipping cards and putting markings on your board, but the theme is really cool. Like you are building a map. You're using the cards, the information to be a cartographer in a fictional um, fantasy kingdom. And you're a map maker, which is an awesome theme and something that I really, really enjoyed. Um, mechanisms or otherwise, but I really enjoyed the mechanisms as well. Number four was a game that I did buy. It is QE, and I've had my eye on this one for a little while since it was uh, originally published. Self-published is like a game that was made out of all wooden components, which was really cool. But that's not what attracted to me. Attracted me to it. QE is a an auction game where players are bidding on resources because each each player is a nation of the world that's trying to buy up companies and resources. Um, all that aside, the idea is instead of everyone just having a pile of money that they, they you know, use some to bid here, some to bid here, you've got a checkbook and you can bid as much money as you can possibly think. Uh, the kicker is if you are the person at the end of the game that has spent the most money, you automatically lose. Uh, and then everything else, there's points that are doled out for. There's a small bonus for whoever spent the least amount of money. Um, but it's that fun little twist that really does it for me. And it's, it's probably my favorite auction game. My number three was one that I reviewed. Uh, I just had the prototype copy of it when I did the review, but now I have the full production copy of Fantastic Factories. Fantastic Factories is just that. It is fantastic. You, um, it's, it's a very good engine building game and, and dice allocation game, which two things that I do really love in games is, is dice allocation, where I roll a die or roll a set of dice uh, and decide where to put them to make them do different things. And also when I can start building up an engine, playing cards that will work off of each other. So what this does is you build different factories to a tableau and those factories uh, you can allocate dice to often or they'll just give you points. Um, and it's a fun puzzly game. So even if you don't end up winning, you can have a really satisfying fun puzzle that you've built where you can roll anything and use it to the best of your ability to score points or just have a satisfying little engine. Number two is a game that I reviewed as well. It's also a game that I didn't anticipate being um, this high on the list at all. Uh, but it is by far my most played game this year. And that is the strictly solo game Cristallo. Um, this is the prototype. I haven't, don't have the full production copy yet, but essentially it is a deck of very pretty cards. Um, and then there's gems as well, plastic gems. It's a fun little production that all comes in this nice little bag. Um, but the gist is you are matching up gems to create sets that you can then place um, the actual little plastic gems onto the cards themselves. Uh, you're building a puzzle. Like you're, It's a puzzle solving game. It reminds me a lot of a of set um, where you're looking for patterns and shapes. Uh, it's It was very difficult for me to beat and I've only beat it a handful of times. I've played it probably close to 30 times now um, and I love it. it. It's a game that I can sit down and play. When I said it was strictly solo, that is true in the sense that there's no teams, there's no turns, uh, but you could easily sit down with someone and try to solve this puzzle together. Uh, and that's something that I've done and really enjoyed. 
Which brings us to my number one, which is one that I purchased myself, uh, Wingspan. Um, it was pretty difficult to get a hold of at the beginning of the year, uh, and I had it on pre-order from a local game store. They ended up saying, eh, we're not going to get it in, so find another way to do it. Um, so I did. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond, their website, and I had a 20% off coupon and bought it that way. And I've loved it. It's a game that um, my wife and I play uh, fairly frequently. Um, yeah, as a kid, I always loved like birds. I thought that I'd be a big bird watcher when I got older. I had a little notebook that I called my bird book. It was just pictures of birds from um, magazines and stuff. And that didn't really carry over into adulthood. I still think, I, I, I think, I think birds are awesome. I don't, it's not something, hmm. Birds are cool. Yeah, birds are cool. You know birds are cool. Uh, but this makes me, this gives me that nostalgia factor of like when there was a time in my life when I really enjoyed the, you know, the study of birds uh, to a small extent. And this, this feeds that. Like you are observing birds. You're trying to draw birds into your aviary um, or into a habitat or watch birds. Uh, and the, the art is fantastic. The gameplay is a lot of fun. It's an engine building game, tableau game. Like I said, I enjoy that type of thing. Um, and while it's, it's a little confusing at first, but it's confusing at first glance, but once you get everything up and running, it's, it's a very simple engine to understand and play. Um, and the production quality is just top notch. So there you have it, my top 10 games of 2019. A little bit late, uh, maybe I'll get it done earlier for next year, but at this point, honestly, who knows. That's all I got for today. I figured we'd keep it kind of uh, simple with just a top 10 list, uh, which is normally not a vlog video, but I figured it'd be a good topic and a good way to do this because like I said, these lists are a little funny to me in that I don't get a chance to play a lot of the, the big, huge names in, in board games every single year. Uh, oftentimes it takes me a year or two to catch up. Sometimes I don't at all. Um, I should do a list of games that I should or want to play, but I haven't. Um, that might be interesting. Probably not. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We are gearing up. We're, we're hoping to reach that thousand subscriber mark uh, as soon as possible. And um, thank you so much for watching. Like, I am blown away by the amount of subscribers that we have now. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this, to watch um, whatever dumb stuff I put on the internet. I, I really appreciate it. It's something that I enjoy doing. And I enjoy it even more when I know that there are other people that are enjoying it. So thank you so much.